So here on YouTube, 22 Plinkster has a pretty popular channel, and a viewer by the name of Kevin asked a really interesting question. He asked why the Mossberg TAC-22 715T tactical rifle seems to have such poor reviews. Well, Kevin, we're going to answer that question, why? And that's coming up next on Mostly 22 LR. Hey everybody, Rob Rosenberger here for Mostly 22 LR. Kevin asked a really great question on 22 Plinkster's page. He asked not, is this the right rifle for me? He asked, why does this rifle get so many poor reviews? So this is not going to be a review of the Mossberg TAC-22 715T tactical rifle so much as it's going to be a critique of some of the issues that that rifle has. And more importantly, we're going to cover a fundamental flaw in some of the reviews that are out there and explain to you why those reviews are flawed. So Kevin, it's a great question. Let's go ahead and get started. Now Kevin, the first thing you need to understand is that the 715T Tactical is not a modern rifle. It is a tactical rifle, but it's not a modern rifle. And we can, if we use the analogy, uh, the 715T looks like a modern rifle in the way that a drag queen looks like a woman. So, for example, if you were to, uh, if you were to look at the charging handles on the 715T Tacticals, you'll realize, looking up close, it's not really a charging handle. What it is, is it's a piece of molded plastic that looks like a charging handle. Let's put a photo up so that you can see what I mean. And if we go to the carry handle submodel of the 715T, we see that the forward assist is not really a forward assist. Up close, you realize it's just a piece of molded plastic that looks like a forward assist. And here's a photo of that. So what we really have is we have a piece of molded plastic in the shape of, in the shape of a modern rifle. We look at it and it has Picatinny rails and a couple of other cool things that make it a tactical rifle, something that you could go out hunting with or you could do your little combat trainings with. But in the end, this is not a modern rifle. It's not a modern rifle in the way that a drag queen is not a woman. Now, we've jumped the chasm for drag queens, so let's go ahead and explain the fundamental problem that exists in the reviews of this rifle. What they're doing is they're comparing apples to oranges, or they're comparing a, um, a drag queen to a real woman. This is not something that you can do. You have to realize that this is not a modern rifle. So what is it really? Well, what it really is, is it's a Model 702 Plinkster from Mossberg with different furniture. That's really all it is. In the same way that you would have a, a Ruger 1022 with all new furniture in a conversion kit, all Mossberg has really done is they've taken the conversion kit and they've done it and they, they sell it as this rifle. Now, what I think happened is I think Mossberg decided, you know what, we need to get in front of Ruger. We need to come out with a tactical rifle that looks like a modern rifle and is better than the Ruger 1022 that you would just buy off the shelf. If your POU, your philosophy of use, was for a tactical rifle, and because it's so inexpensive, you can buy the 702 Plinkster in the tactical furniture, known as the 715T, for cheaper than you can get a Ruger 1022 and do the conversions yourself, or go and buy a custom converted Ruger 1022 that looks like a tactical AR-15. Okay, so these are two 715T tacticals. They're in my personal collection. Let's do a quick safety check here. We see nothing up the pipe. The actions are open. I see no magazines. We do have a magazine, but this magazine is empty. This, we'll need this later for a critique on this rifle. So these rifles are clear. Uh, if we look at these rifles, we can see the charging handles are molded plastic. We can see that the uh, pins right here are just, uh, they're molded. And of course, the forward assist is molded. This is, I mean, this is all molded right here. It's a tactical rifle, but it's not a modern rifle. You can't remove the upper from the lower. There's just no way to clean it from the breech unless you were to fully disassemble the barreled actions here. What this really is, is it's a 702 Plinkster. 
Okay, now let's begin with the critiques. The first one I want to do is I want to use this rifle right here. This is known as the carry handle model. Obviously, you've got the carry handle right up here. This is the one with the aggressive looking moldings on it. And what I, what I don't like about this carry handle model up here is this Picatinny rail, rail number five. If you were to put an optic up here, it is so high up off of your barrel line that you aren't going to be able to get a good zero off of your scope. It's, it's just way too high. Remember, we're not talking about a 223 that shoots out to 300 yards. We're talking about a 22 that you're probably only going to sight in to 50 yards, if that. You might only be sighting it to 25. So, personally, what I've done, I've just deleted this. This is irrelevant. The carry handle is still actually pretty good. And this back sight right here is actually really nice as well. You've got a good, solid rifle with iron sights. Okay, now let's talk about the front sight. We talked about the rear sight. Again, we're talking about molded plastic. You can't put a 223 round in here and adjust this height. This is molded plastic. So again, if you're thinking about changing your front sight, that's out. But again, we're not talking about a modern rifle. This is a nice, cheaply made, it's an inexpensive rifle. So you're going to rely entirely on your rear sight, and your rear sight does really well. This one's zeroed at 25, 50, and 100 yards and has never had a problem for me. It's currently zeroed at 100 yards. Okay, now I want to talk about a really big concern of mine when it comes to these Picatinny rails, what I'll call rail number five. It more impacts the flat top submodel than it does this model. But this charging handle right here, as you can see, is molded in. If you have a Picatinny mount or a Weaver mount that will slide on you can't slide it on from this direction. You would have to literally start cutting this with a Dremel or with a file or something like that to be able to slide in both directions. This impedes your Picatinny rail. Now there's another problem here, and you'll notice on the other side, what looks like your D-ring is in fact a molded piece of equipment, and it impedes the Picatinny rail as well. You would need to do a cut right here and a cut right here to be able to get something to slide on. There are Picatinny mounts that do slide. You need to know this if you're going to buy this rifle and buy sliding Picatinnies or sliding Weaver mounts for it. So be aware of that. Okay, now let's talk about magazine release. I have a serious issue with this. Here comes the biggest critique I have of this rifle as a tactical rifle. Now, the critique that we're doing here is for everything in the 702 lineup. It includes the 702 Plinkster, the 715T Tactical, and all of its uh, variants. It includes the 715P Pistol, which has the, uh, the Duck Dynasty kind of branding to it. All of the 702 series rifles have a, an action that is based off of the Marlin Model 70, which itself is an action based off of the Marlin Model 60. So what we have here is what we want to do with a tactical rifle is we want to be able to why ambidextrous, really nice. We want that magazine to come out quick so we can put our next magazine in, charge the rifle, and we're done. Drops quick, charge the rifle, and we're done. Drops quick, charge the rifle, and we're done. But there's a problem with this. Let's drop this, and let's drop this hammer. Let's drop this bolt. Come on, Rob. There we go. We've dropped the bolt. We're on our last shot, and we've got last, we've got last shot hold open. Now, let's try and drop this magazine. Oops, won't drop. Try from here. This ambidextrous lever will not drop it. The problem is, is that this bolt is putting too much pressure on this magazine. We have to pull the bolt back, and then we let go. But guess what? The magazine goes forward. We can't simply drop the charge when we're putting that second magazine back in. We have to do a full charge here in order to get it to work. Again, I'm gonna show you. From the ambidextrous side, on the left side, can't get it. From the right side, can't get it. We have to release the pressure and do a two-handed magazine drop at last shot hold open. That is a serious problem if you're going to be talking about a tactical rifle. Remember, it's not a modern rifle, but it's playing itself off as a tactical rifle, and this does not have tactical magazine drop quality to it. Okay, now for another critique, and this critique is on the fact that this is an inexpensive molding. It's a very inexpensive molding on a Model 702. The problem that you'll face is that this molding might not be in alignment with the barrel. This might not be in alignment with the barrel, and this certainly might not be in alignment with the barrel. In this particular example that we have here, this Picatinny rail is off by about one degree, or 60 minutes of angle. 60 MOA is what this is off. 
It shoots so high at 100 yards that I'm literally on five feet above the target. Now, there, this is not something that you can easily fix. There's no, you know, it's too cheap of a rifle to go out and get an expensive fix for it. So if you're looking for something in a tactical that has really straight Picatinny rails, you need to look at a different rifle. Your quality here is just not that great. But that's okay. This We're talking about a $200 rifle. This is about a $260 rifle because of some of the uh, accoutrements that it has and the flat top rail and, of course, the uh, threading. But really, it's an extremely inexpensive rifle, and the railings here can be off. Now, your railings right here, I haven't noticed that they might be off. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to put a red dot to the side, that would be good. This red dot from BSA actually is able to compensate for 60 minutes of angle. I've got it torqued down pretty far on the vertical, but it works. So my red dot works, and my scopes do not. This is just one more thing that you have to worry about when you've got a tactical rifle from Mossberg. Okay, now let's critique barrel threading. And, oh, good grief, you're going to critique the barrel threading? You bet. If you were to buy this rifle right here, this 715T, the carry handle model, let's say you bought it for your son. He wants a plinker, but he doesn't want, you know, you don't care if he's got a real tactical rifle. It just has to look like a tactical rifle. If that's your POU, your philosophy of use, then you're good. Get the carry handle model. It's the most inexpensive of all of the 715T submodels that are out there. This one is nice and inexpensive, and you can and you can run with it. It's, it's good. But if you want a real tactical rifle, and you're not worried if it's a modern rifle, you just care that it's a tactical rifle, you can't buy this rifle because a good tactical rifle is going to have a threaded barrel. And this, the carry handle model, does not come with a threaded barrel. If you want the barrel threaded like I do because I have a suppressor, you're going to have to go get this threaded aftermarket. And that's a $75 to $100 add-on. Why pay $75 to $100 when instead you could buy the flat top model for about $65 more. You get, uh, you get rid of this stuff right here. You delete all the stuff on the top. You've got five rails that it can actually use, give or take the problems with the D-ring molding and the uh, charging handle molding, and you actually get a threaded end. Now this is also a 16 and a half or a 16 and a quarter inch as opposed to this 18 inch. Now why is this one 18 inches and it costs less? The answer is because this is literally, they just took a 702 Plinkster barreled action and they put it inside this furniture. This one, they cut the barrel to 16 and a half, threaded it, and that costs you a little bit more. Also too, when you get this model that I have right here, you get some really interesting iron sights with it. They're not flip up iron sights, but they are the good, uh, they are the good peep sights that you would be looking for. And both of those sights are actually, you could get some money on eBay from those just to offset some of the cost when you switch to a red dot or a, or a uh, scope. Now, here's an interesting problem with this. This is not the original uh, flash hider that came with this rifle. I didn't like the look of that flash hider, so I went and I got a different one. But our problem with this, you might be able to see it on this rifle. There is some grip that had to occur here. I don't know what Mossberg did or what their, uh, their folks in South America did when they built this. The barreled actions are being made outside of the United States. They torqued this down so hard that I had to take this down to the gunsmith to get it off. They, I don't know how they got it off, but they got it off. The barrel is true still. It's got a little bit of uh, roughness to it. It's not scuffed, but it is. Uh, there's a little bit of roughing. That roughing is going to come out as I continue to work on the bluing. But this took a lot of effort to bring it off. I don't know why Mossberg tried so hard to crank down this flash hider, or not this flash hider, but the flash hider that they include by default. It is a monster to get off. Be very careful if you try to remove that flash hider. Okay, so what have we learned today? Well, we've learned a number of critiques about the Mossberg TAC-22 715T tactical rifle. This includes some critiques that are inherent to specific submodels of that rifle, like the carry handle model. There are specific issues with the 715T tactical line, which includes this charging handle, for example. And then there are some, like with the, uh, the release mechanism, that apply to all of the 702 Plinkster series. And that includes the 715P pistol series, which is, uh, that has the uh, Duck Dynasty branding on it. Now, Kevin, I don't want you to lose sight of the biggest critique that I had, and that is the critique of the reviews about this rifle. If they are reviewing this rifle as a modern rifle, the review is wrong. 
That is a flaw in the review. If they're only reviewing it as a tactical rifle, then it's a good review. So go back to those reviews, look at those reviews, see if they're flawed. And if, even if they are flawed, take out the flaw, use your informed opinion, pick out the pieces that are right, and make that informed decision. I'm Rob Rosenberger for Mostly 22 lr And remember, 22 lr is real ammunition. Treat it as such. Do the conversions yourself, or go and buy a custom converted Ruger 1022 that looks like a tactical AR-15. Okay. Woo! I Boy, think. I'm sure uh, Mossberg's gonna love that analogy to drag queens. Yeah. <laughs>